Hey, good morning, man. Good morning. So let's just start with this, dude. Yeah. Uh, the excitement, because there's viral videos now of, of Knicks fans <laughs> celebrating this winning streak. And, and I got to say that just as a real longtime NBA fan who sneaky did love the Knicks a little bit in the 90s, that the league is just way better if the Knicks are relevant. And them being this is what to you guys? It's it's pandemonium. You know, as you said, when the Knicks are good, the, the league is good. You even had LeBron James tweet that out yesterday. You know, it's absolute pandemonium to see what this, this team is doing, defying expectations. Las Vegas had them penciled in at 22 wins. They're now six games over 500, fifth seed in the East, eight-game winning streak. Uh, I mean, you know, there's so much compliments to go around, you know. Tom Thibodeau's impact on this team defensively. Julius Randle playing at an all-star level. Uh, but you're now getting significant contributions from the supporting cast on the offensive side. And that includes Derrick Rose, Reggie Bullock, and your fellow countryman, R.J. Barrett. Yeah, we're going to get to R.J., but I, I got to start with, uh, I think, one of the biggest topics moving forward here, which is Randle, who's getting just yeah. now down-ballot MVP buzz. And... When I watch, so I've always been a Randall guy. I, I yeah. used to make, like, every time I've talked to my Laker fan friends, I used to always make fun of them because, so I usually call him alligator arms because he's got those short arms. <laughs> he's a big guy. But he he's good, right? Like, he always had a game. Yeah. And he was a high pedigree guy, and there was a lot to like about him. But the shooting now is something where I, I didn't expect Julius Randall to be this level of a shooter. He makes plays for other guys. Yeah. He, he just looks phenomenal he really does seem to be a guy that's unlocked just one more step of his game and I, I had to wonder the other night when I was watching them are the Knicks good or is it just that Julius Randle is actually playing so well that he's elevating what is otherwise a not such a great team yeah I think it's both I, I think they're good especially from a defensive standpoint these guys are locked in you very rarely see them you know miss assignments on the defensive end and, and again that's a Tom Thibodeau impact these guys are playing hard every night and he's holding them accountable in order for you to play you have to make sure that you're playing hard and playing defense those are the, those are the two keys for Tibbs on the Julius side you know there were two things we were looking for when they acquired him two years ago that were really going to determine his impact on his team and, and you hit it on the head his shooting ability especially from deep and his playmaking ability last year those two areas were completely abysmal you know you had fans ready to run him out of town because he was that bad and he was making terrible terrible decisions and leading to a lot of turnovers so he melted under the pressure of being the guy in new york in his first year in his second year it's been the complete opposite he's been an incredible playmaker for his team upping his assist to usage ratio he's now shooting over 40 percent from three i mean he's absolutely lights out just finished a 40 point performance against the hawks um only three players in the nba have averaged over 20 10 five assists and shooting over 40 percent from three and that's larry bird nikola Jokic, and julius randall has joined that company so he's making a lot better decisions you know passing a lot better out of the double team and just uh just being a lot more you know mentally savvy in terms of just leading Leading his team to, to wins. You know, he's making winning plays, and that's been the biggest difference in Julius Randle on in a Knicks uniform from year one to two. All right, Casey Powell, also known as CP the franchise. Uh, he of Knicks Fan TV on YouTube. You can check it out at KnicksFanTV.com. Uh I was not one of those that underestimated the Knicks. I got laughed at preseason when I picked their over you under. Did. I picked the you over. Did, yeah, yeah. No, good no, man, yeah, good no. man. Easy to forget, isn't it? I laughed at you. <laughs> yeah, and you know why I said they were going over? Because of Tibbs. Because he yeah. has a shelf life, but this is what happens. He grinds your top player's knees into <laughs> dust. Uh, so, yeah, that's why he has a shelf life. That's why it's not going to last five to ten years. Right. We, we did have, like, a long, is R.J. Barrett going to survive his, uh, <laughs> right. his walk to Raptors free agency? <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But it's incredible. They, they were 23rd in the NBA in defensive rating a season ago. They're yeah. fourth this year. Yeah. And, man, how much of that is attributed to the head coach? I would say a ton. Yeah. And... He's in the conversation for Coach of the Year, but he is way he behind win. Quinn Snyder and Monty Williams. And I get it. The Phoenix and Utah are having great seasons. Uh, I think Chris Paul is a big part of what's happening in Phoenix, to be sure. But, man, when you're talking about one coach and its impact on a franchise, I think Tibbs is above everybody. 
it, it can't be understated. I mean, this is precisely, yes, they've made a couple of additions. Derrick Rose has been impactful. Alec Burks has been impactful. The the draft pick of Emmanuel quickly has been impactful. But this is, by and large, the same team that David Fisdale and Mike Miller had last year. And as you said, this team was 23rd in defensive rating last year. This year, they've, they've hovered around the top three, now fourth. And that is exactly attributed to Tom Thibodeau, and they're getting even better. Like I said, this is a team that rarely misses assignments. They are locked in. RJ's playing a plus defense. Julius Randle's playing a tough defense. You know, you have Reggie Bullock in the starting lineup. Tibbs likens, likens him to kind of that jack-of-all-trades. He puts him on the best offensive player. And to, to a man, they're just locked in and playing together on the defensive end. I agree with you. You know, Monty Williams certainly deserves his uh, his accolades. Quint Snyder as well, having the Jazz in the, in the number one seed in the West. But Tom Thibodeau should get some Coach of the Year uh, votes, no doubt about it. Yeah, I just I look at that one and say who's doing the most with the least, and to me that's Tibbs. Yeah, and I, I I don't think that I guess like the Jazz and the Suns are exceeding expectations, but you're right, Ben. I, I would say that the Suns are more of an executive year uh, of the year award where you went out and traded for Chris Paul and you signed Jay Crowder, and those two moves work for you. And then with Utah, it's just kind of a season where a lot of teams have been hurt and they have depth and they have continuity. And that seems to really matter, especially in these pandemic seasons where you just had to kind of rush into a new year. So, yeah, for me, Tibbs would be coach of the year. Like, if I had a vote, that would be who the guy is because I think well, he's doing the most with the least and he and he has the highest impact. You know what the odds are? The voting odds are ridiculous. Like, no, he's not He's not a favorite, right? He's probably, no, he's I 11 to 1. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, I was yeah, the other plus 800. Yeah, the, the other guys are minus favorites, and, and mm. Tibbs is – is 11 to 1. He's plus 1100. That makes absolutely no sense. Mm. Yeah, that is a little bit wild. Okay, so let's get to RJ because, boy, uh, Canada has as much riding on RJ Barrett as the Knicks do. Okay? <laughs> like, we had the Andrew Wiggins experience where somebody got really hyped up and we said, this is the guy, this is the guy, and we need this guy to be the guy. And poor Jamal Murray, no matter what he does, we're always like, yeah, but you're, you're, you're not the guy we want, you know, for whatever reason. So, R.J. Barrett comes in the league, and we say it's great that he went to New York because he's got the type of mentality to play in a city like that. He's been the, yes. the chosen one for the Canadian national program since the very beginning. He's uh, emotional at the draft. He's the kind of guy who's a basketball junkie who's going to understand the importance of going and playing in New York and, and absorb all those things. But year one was that. The efficiency was horrific. This year, the numbers are up across the board when it comes to, like, field goal percentage, true shooting percentage, everything, right? Three points, even free throws. Like, yeah. little things for R.J. Barrett. The shooting and the efficiency have gone through the roof. Do you, like, how does the market just look at him right now? Because I'm happy that he's taken a step forward, but I've also walked back my R.J. Barrett's going to be maybe even a perennial all-star someday. I think he can be an all-star, man. I think he's getting there. You look at the differences between last year and this year, it's been stark. And the all-rookie team snub really bothered him. Bothered a lot of Knicks fans yeah. as well because you had uh, Terrence Davis from the Toronto Raptors on that team. Yeah. And Terrence Davis is now a former uh, Raptor. Uh, Sacramento Kings, we Sacramento believe, actually, Kings. Now, Right, somewhere. right. Traded Honestly, him to, I don't even know. Yeah, they, they <laughs> traded him to Sacramento for the equivalent of, you know, an IOU and a bag of baseball. So that's how valuable yeah, Terrence yeah. Davis was worth. But <laughs> nevertheless, you know, RJ's really taking that chip on his shoulder to improve. And, you know, he started the preseason and, and the, the first game of the season very hot, you know, shooting. And then after that, he missed 20 straight three-pointers, including an 0-for-8 performance against his hometown team, the Raptors, down in Tampa. Since then, since January 1st, he's averaging 40% from three he's been one of the hottest three-point shooters in the league 17 points a game he's being the true robin to julius randall's batman and he's only 20 years old and that's why i think that there's more room to grow for rj barrett but what i love about him the most is what you touched on in in the beginning segue is that his mental makeup is made for new york he wants to improve. Tom Thibodeau said he, he's got the shooting machine right outside the coach's office. He's buying into what the coach wants and needs from him on a nightly basis. And like I said, there's a lot of plenty of room to grow for R.J. Barrett, and we're seeing it again here in year two. See, I'm half Latvian, so <laughs> I had this connection. Like, I have a Knicks player jersey, right? Like, yeah, I have. Yeah. It's actually kind of behind me, the, the Zinger player jersey. Yeah. And... It was like it, the, one of the fun things about having Chris Stapps with the Knicks was that Knicks fans are so diehard for their guys. Like when there's a guy they like, they just go all in and they push. Yeah. Like 
we had serious Chris Dabbs Porzingis versus Joel Embiid and Giannis yes. and Kumbo <laughs> conversation. And Jokic. And, and Jokic. Says, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we were having those conversations, and Nick said, like, yeah, because we believe. And this is what I needed for my R.J. Barrett confidence boost today, is that, you know, the season's been good. I've been happy with him, but overall – um, I've been just a little bit worried when it comes to superstar or star potential or carry team can of potential. Yeah. And then you come on and you speak about him this way. I'm like, I'm so happy that RJ's a Nick. Like, I'm just so happy that he's with a fan base where if he plays well and he does like high basketball IQ things and he works hard, that there's a fan base that's actually going to give a crap about that, that he didn't end up like Zion in New Orleans where they're like, dunk it or that's it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's, that's all we can get. No, 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 no. This is a city. It's 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 heavy as the head that wears the crown, as many guys have seen. But you know, when you play well, when you play hard, this city, unlike any other, rallies around our players. And like I said, RJ, he has a mental makeup to withstand to withstand the criticism. You know, after that that putrid performance against the Raptors, you went four for nineteen on on New Year's Eve. We had guys calling in our show that was ready to send him to the G League, wanted to trade him. He's not going to be the guy in this town. I mean, it, it was the most. Somber New Year's Eve show that it was the worst show we did all year. Honestly, it was like a funeral. But you know, since then he's been a hero, and like I said, having that mental makeup to to withstand that adversity is what's going to make him a really good player. So, last one, saving the best for last. Yeah. So if the Knicks get out of the first round, because I, I think that would be the goal at this point, right? It's yeah. it's year one of this. You get out of the first round, you're competitive in the playoffs. And then this off season, they land the fish. Like finally, someone looks at the Knicks and says, yeah, "I want to play there. I want to play with R.J. Barrett. I want to play with Julius Randle." Yeah. And we're going to make this work. How does the James Dolan conversation change? Because the last time we were in our studio, it was we were playing the audios of "Sell the Team." You know, yeah. like the the chance in the garden. Winning changes everything, man. Winning changes everything, and, and you know, when you've been losing for the better part of 20 years, it's very easy to look at, you know, Dolan's throwing guys out, and he's throwing Oakley out, he's throwing fans out, he panicked on the Carmelo trade, but I think I, I give credit to James Dolan, I'm not a James Dolan chill, I give him credit for putting the people in place that he believes can, can help. And, and when things go bad, he pulls the plug early. He pulled the plug on Phil Jackson when things went south. Pulled the plug on Steve Mills when he didn't, when he saw that he botched the Kristaps Porzingis trade and wasn't doing a good job. Now he's bringing in Leon Rose. It's time to let Leon Rose, World Wide West and the gang, develop this team. Put this team together on paper. And you know they're going to go out for the big star. You know they're going to go big game hunting. And if they do, the narrative has to change. The narrative has to change. And like I said, winning cures all. Right now, this team is six games over 500, and you're not hearing a peep about James Dolan. So, like I said, as long as this team is winning, the Dolan stuff is going to be put under the table. Yeah, maybe you'll even listen to some JD in the straight shot. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Probably not, though. (laughs) You know what what sucks, though, is if the Knicks win, and he's like, guess who's performing at the parade? <laughs> uh, this is big time to shine. Uh, CD is available and merch at the back. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Nick says. JD in the straight shot. That's a good one. Hey, man. Uh, I think the Raptors are. This is actually going to be kind of a sneaky important game for them because yes. they're they're winning games again and they need to get in the playoffs. And I think it's going to be a good push. It's going to be a good game. But again, I, I really do think that I speak for all NBA fans when I say it's good to have the Knicks back in the fold. Uh, thanks for doing this today, dude. I have a feeling you guys really want to root for us. It's okay. It's okay. You guys are friends with Ariel. Oh, Ariel's my guy. It's okay yeah, to peek I, over the that. fence every once in a while. But real yeah. quickly, as you said, you know, Raptors are coming in hot. Winners are four straight. Half game out of the 10th spot. Play the Knicks tough on that New Year's Eve night. They're coming in full strength. I, this is a tricky matchup for the Knicks. I'm looking at the two matchups between Anobi and Siakam versus Randall and, and RJ. On the bench, you know, Gary Trent Jr., uh, Malachi Flynn going toe-to-toe with Derrick Rose and Emmanuel quickly. That's going to be a tough test for the Knicks as well. So uh, the Knicks also coming in hot shooting from three, but against the Raptors, first matchup three for 36 and then nine for 35. For some reason, they just can't get it going from behind the arc. So as you said, I think the Raptors come in hot, and it's going to be a tricky matchup for the Knicks. I do yep. too. I'm looking forward to it, man. Again, uh, CP the franchise, thanks for making time for us today, buddy. This is great. Thanks again, fellas. Looking forward to the next one. Thanks again. Have a great weekend. You too, man. Take care. Take care. And Nick's Fan TV, YouTube.
Thank you, sir. That was a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. You too. Mm -hmm. Talk soon. Bye-bye. Thanks.